Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is the continuation of our previous tutorial where we have learned a, way, a key concept about string objects that is immutability. So in, in this tutorial we will first see how Java creates string objects in memory that is how Java manages string objects in memory. For any programming languages, managing memory is the most important job or most important task. As an application grows, so as creation of string objects. So in Java, we, uh, it has JVM has a very efficient way of handling this. It sets aside a special area in memory called string constant pool and whenever JVM gets a request of creating a string object first it goes and check the string constant pool whether a similar value or the same value exists in the string constant pool or not if it gets such an object having the same value what it does is that it make the reference variable refer to this object so now we have a same java uh, same string object being referred by two or more variables and if it doesn't if it doesn't have uh, this variable in in the in, in this uh, object in in the uh, string constant pool it goes ahead and creates a new object so in this way it checks creation of redundant string objects but one thing is pretty much clear over here that the same object can be shared or can be uh, referred by two different uh, reference variables so these two reference variables are unaware of each other so any change if made by one of the variable would directly affect the other so here comes the main concept of making string objects immutable thus as the string very string objects are immutable so the string object values cannot be changed thus it helps in, in a way to manage memory more efficiently now one can say that overriding string class would allow modifying this immutability behavior yes for this also J java has an answer the string class is made final so that no one can ever override this class and this immutability feature of this string object is retained so next we'll see the difference between string object creation remember I have said earlier while I was creating uh, strings there were, I, I had mentioned two options for creating strings those two we'll see the first option I have mentioned is string s equals hello so what this mainly does is that it creates one string object and one reference variable this string object which is create is kept in the string constant pool and the second option which I have shown is that string s2 equals new string hello so what is the difference between these two options we will see this in this option two strings are created two string objects are created and one reference variable are, is created here what happens is that the string object one string object is created outside the pool and the other having the value hello is created inside the pool 
and S2 will point to the object which is outside the pool. We'll suddenly see this with an example. So we have a project over here and a main uh, Java uh, uh, Java file. We'll write a small piece of code here to show this memory management thing. Firstly, we'll define a string s with our first option, which is string s equals hello. Next we define another string, we call it, in the first string we call it S1 suppose, the next string we call it S2 and we give the same value. We are trying to see that we are defining two strings having the same value whether it creates the same object or not. and another string we are creating string s equals new string hello so we are having three string definition one s1 equals hello s2 equals hello string s3 equals new string hello now we will see this with the help of equal to equal to operator now what this equal to equal to operator does you may know or you may not I'll just uh, repeat it or I'll just bring this into picture is that uh, the equal to equal to operator works only uh, returns a true only if the objects are same or the object is same and there are two reference variable which points to the same object so I'll see if s1 calls equals s2 then I say that s1 and S2 are referring to same object. Else, I'll do a sys out. S1 and S2 are referring to different object. So we'll run, run this first and we'll see what's the output. So we can see that S1 and S2 are referring to same object. What it shows is that the object hello is being referred to by two reference variables S1 and S2. Now we'll see what is the case with S3. If S1 equals S3. then print s1 and s3 are referring to same object else s1 and s3 are to different object
So here we see that S1 and S2 are referring to same object while S1 and S3 are referring to different object. So by this we can prove that hello is been referred by S1 and S2 reference variables whereas S3 doesn't refer to hello it refers to some string object which is present in or outside the uh, memory pool string pool I, I, I must say so these two objects are pointing to different memory locations so equal to equal to sign is giving us false in case where we have uh, said that s1 calls equals to s3 thus we can say that java manages string very well So, so this we have seen next we come to the different methods of string class here I have noted down some of the very important methods of uh, string class but you can get this in any Java book so I would just uh, stress on this substring uh, substring method uh, actually there are two types of uh, definition of substring it has the first one is a single parameterized method which is a public string substring with uh, with an integer value begin this begin is the index from where the string starts getting the part of the string actually what the substring method does is that it returns a part of the string now from where it, it should start taking that part it starts from the begin this begin index is a zero base index and it goes on till the end of the string whereas the second definition public string substring int begin comma int end this also returns a part of a string where it starts taking the part from the begin index which is a zero base index that is this is the index starts from zero to the end index again here it's not the zero here it's not a zero base index here it's one base index that is here the index we have provided is starts that starts from one not zero please keep this in mind other than that other methods are pretty much straightforward so you can just have a glance uh, through it or you may you may refer to it later when you require just click on this tutorial and you'll, you'll see this slide or you'll see this uh, part the next important thing that I'm going to move on is when you discuss about string string builder and string buffer class so we have seen that string is basically immutable it's an immutable object whenever a string is created so you cannot do whenever you create some do some modification on a string it, it results in creation of a new string but in case our application has too much string related modifications and our application is huge so in that case it results in creation of a large number or large quantity of string objects which is not much beneficial in case of memory management so in that case the string builder and string buffer class comes into picture so basically this java lang dot java dot lang dot string builder and java dot lang dot string buffer class should be used when you have to make a lot of modification to strings of characters so that's it like and next part we'll see is that there is not much difference between string buffer and string builder but rather you can say that string builder and string buffer are exactly the same except string builder class is not thread safe 
so by this uh, we can say that it is better to use string uh, builder class where you you need not to have a thread safe kind of scenario because it's efficient because it takes lesser time to execute its methods we'll see a small uh, code where I, wherein we can segregate between string the functionality of string and string builder or string buffer class we'll just see it so we have a main java file here we'll write a very simple a very simple straightforward line of code here we write string s equals hello we want to modify this string s and we want to print this string s assuming that it has been modified so we want to concat something to it and similarly we define a string uh, buffer class sb equals new string buffer hello and the same operation we i want to do it on this object sb object of string buffer class here we call it append i would make a sys out of both this objects i would print s and see what the output is i clear out this let me print both of this and then see sp so let's see see what we have got we have got is that when we have print the string object we have got only hello because the actual string hello didn't get any modify any modification in it whereas when we have done the same operation on uh, this string buffer object and appended world at the end of hello we got hello world so by this it shows that string buffer is helpful whenever we are doing some kind of string related uh, modifications rigorously so it doesn't create a new string object every time when you do some modification on the same uh, on the on the object the same object gets modified every time so by this i want to conclude my uh session on this uh, string if you have any doubt kindly contact me or mail me in this address mail id java concepts for you address gmail.com you can always visit my blog java concepts for you dot blogspot dot in thanks for watching this video